I'm going to throw this question out to both Roger and to Vern. I understand the song, Turn, 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 was inspired by a passage from the Bible. And I'll ask you if you would please explain that. Why don't you do it, Roger? Well, um, as I recall, Pete Seeger got it out of the Bible. He uh, was thumbing through the book of Ecclesiastes one day, and he decided that uh, it was a real nice, meaty piece of uh, scripture, and he thought he'd put a tune to it. So uh, I remember talking to him about it once, and he said, oh, it was nothing. I just put the tune from Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star to it. You know? <laughs> what, do, you, do you know which passage he, he was talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Um, the, the, the entire chapter? Right, chapter 3. Because I, I want to look that up. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Do you remember the, was there, the a key, was there a key verse? Well, it starts at the beginning of it, and it goes into about uh, maybe 20 verses down. It's a, a time to be born, a time to die, and so on. And uh, he modified it a little bit so it fit the tune. But. Roger, have we met? Yes, we have, Ralph. We met in 1968 uh, on your oh. WSM radio show. Well, you were, was Graham Parsons? That's right. Graham and I came over with uh, a single from the Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. Yes. That was not a good <laughs> meeting, was it? No, it wasn't, but uh, I, I think uh, it's kind of funny now. That was 68? 1968, right. And uh, the birds, I recall, were a very hot rock group. Right. We had just come from uh, number one success with, like, Turn Turn and Mr. But I Henry. didn't play any rock music. No. And we were, uh, <laughs> we were like, invading uh, enemy uh, aliens no, it, was, it wasn't enemy territory. I just didn't play any rock music. Oh. Uh, See, we thought what we'd done was country in our... <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have any bird records. Uh-huh. Uh, another embarrassing thing happened to me on that all-night show. Uh, the Jordanaires brought Buddy Holly by one night. I didn't have any Buddy Holly records. I mean, I had Ray Price, George Jones, Carl Smith, Webb Pierce, Kitty Wells. Those were the records I had. And I always got the impression, well, I had a re reason to get the impression Graham was not uh, happy with me because later he, he dedicated a song to me, didn't he? Or somebody did in the Birds organization. That's right. Uh, as a matter of fact, Graham and I wrote the song together. What was it, a truck driving song? Yeah, it's a drugstore truck driving man. And, on the, and who, who, on the record, you can hear it, this is for you, Ralph. That's right. And I, what was the point of all that? Oh, well, we just sent in a little letter to you. <laughs> <laughs> were, you were you mad at me? It wasn't anything real serious. Huh? <laughs> I think, I think you were disappointed with me because I didn't play the Birds records. Well, we were a little hurt by that. Huh? Yeah, we were hurt. <laughs> well, I was afraid that all the people like George Jones wouldn't like the Birds. Uh -huh. see, the times were quite different then. They certainly were. And I'm glad to see things going uh, the way they are. You didn't cross over very much. Yeah. And nobody crossed over very much. Marty Robbins was another biggie that I played a lot of. Did the Birds appear on the Grand Ole Opry during that, that era? Yes, we did. How did that... Now, in 1968, how did that work? Well, I don't remember exactly how we got on the show. I think some of the uh, people at CBS Records managed to get us on. Yeah, but how, what was the reaction? Uh, the audience reaction? Yes. It was a little cool. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, how were you? Were, did you have long hair? No, we had, I had my hair about like it is now. Did, did, were you dressed in uh, the rock costumes of that day? No, as a matter of fact, we had uh, cowboy boots and jeans, and we were trying to... See, you didn't understand where we were coming from. We had fallen in love with country music in 1968, and Graham Parsons had... Uh, he was from the South, and he'd always grown up on it. And his ambition in life was to play the Grand Ole Opry. And so we went ahead with Sweetheart of the Rodeo, and we were trying to do a real sincere, genuine country album and not knowing too much about it, being from Chicago myself. It came off a little different than that, but uh, we were really sincere at that time. Graham Parsons later became the mentor for Amy Lou Harris. Oh, yeah. She credits Graham Parsons with interesting her in country music. That's right, I've heard her say that. Well, Roger, I'm sorry it worked out that way back in 1968. Well, Are we still friends? Yes. Okay, <laughs> <so>. good. Uh, <laughs> let's take a little break here at Nashville now, and then we'll all be back. 